This is uh, Holy Cross Mock uh, Component 2 Mock, and this is uh, number one of four. We're up to question three, which is a one, two, three page question including Hardy Weinberg, see calculations of frequencies of alleles, it's got chi squared, oh, wonderful. Hopefully you have uh, practiced all of these skills. So, uh, inheritance of body colour in fruit flies, uh, Drosophila, little fruit flies, you occasionally see them around uh, bowls of fruit zipping about. Two fruit flies with grey bodies were crossed, and of the offspring, 152 had grey and 48 had black. That's telling us, that's telling us, if we've got grey bodied fruit flies and they are producing a different colour fruit fly then our original two must have been heterozygous and they both must have had a kind of hidden allele, a recessive allele for black. So our genotypes of our original two, well we need to pick some allele names. We're going to follow the convention of the dominant allele uh, giving us the letter. So uh, these have been big G for grey and then black. Well uh, I, I would quite like to use a little b but I've got to follow the rule that uh, the two letters are the same. So I'm going to have a little g there. Okay, and that's the gene types of the parents, they're both the same. I could put another big g and a little g there. And our explanation there is that there's a, um, yeah, there's a ratio of enotypes. So that's our genotypes, what genes are there. Phenotypes, what does it look like? So the ratio of phenotypes, you know, for example, uh, that's about 3 to 1. So that's about 50, that's 150, so 3 to 1. 3 to 1. Um, Grey to black. So that's telling us that they were heterozygous and they must have had a, an allele for black body in there. We could have, we could have given a little, little punnet square. And we could have gone, there's our parents. These are, those are the gametes and we could have gone that is a grey that one's a grey that one's a grey and that one's a black And that would be a, an explanation as well. Explain why a statistical test should be applied to the data obtained in this investigation. Well, like any data, it could be just due to chance. Okay? And we need to kind of work out what's the probability of these numbers being kind of true and not just down to chance. So those two words um, we're going to use. So we have to determine the, the probability and later on we, we'll, we'll look at the levels of probability that we're happy with um, of the results being due to chance. So for example, you could flip a coin twice and get two heads, 
but you you wouldn't be happy with those results. So you, that's why you need a statistical test and enough enough data, or else you can't suggest that your results have any any significance. Or it might just be kind of coincidental. Here's a chi-square test, and here's a formula. Use the formula. Ooh, dear me. Um, well, if you're like me and you don't really like writing a lot of numbers down into a into a big formula, I'm going to cheat and and draw a table. I'm going to cheat and draw a table. Right. We have got greys. So here's our data up here. 152 had grey bodies. 48 had black bodies. So I have got grey and black. And I remember drawing this table, I've drawn this table lots of times. So how many did we observe? Well we had 152 grey and 48 black. How many would we expect? Okay, well, what's our total? 152 plus 48. 152 plus 48 is... So the, look what they've done with the numbers. Uh, it's 200. And if we had four possible phenotypes, sorry, four possible genotypes, you might get this to the wrong way around, four possible genotypes, then we'd expect 50 of each one, a no, quarter, a quarter of each one, so a quarter of 200 is 50, so um, expected is 200 divided by 4 equals 50. So there was, uh, <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Uh, that would be 50, and there's three of those phenotypes of the grey, so that would be 150. You can check these, check if you're not an idiot like me, because you can, you can sort of go, that's 200, and that should still be 200. Okay. Right, and even before we go any further, uh, we're going to do some stats on this. But look at the numbers, they're really close to the expected. So when you eventually come up with an answer, if you are suggesting there's a difference between these and you know, accepting your null hypothesis, then you need to go back and have a look at your calculation again. We, we're kind of expecting these to, to run with our hypothesis or reject our null hypothesis. So the next stage, uh, let's say uh, O minus E. O minus E, so 152 minus 150, so 152 minus 150 is 2, 48 minus 50, so 48 minus 50 is minus 2, O minus E squared, O minus E squared, well that's 2 squared, equals 2 times 2 is 4 and this is minus 2 squared so minus 2 times minus 2 is 4 it's not minus 4, it's 4 so you get rid of that with the, with the minus and we are moving further on into this equation O minus E squared over E so O minus E better put the brackets in just in case there's any mathematicians watching uh, divided by e so we've got 4 divided by our expected 150 and here we've got our 4 again divided by 50 trusty calculator 4 divided by 150 is that number there, 0.02. I'm going to round that off to 7 there. If eventually, when I'm looking in this table over here, the numbers are very close together, 
I might go back and use a higher level of precision here, but I'm gonna, gonna round that off there. And four divided by 50, because 0.08. And we want the total of that. So a total. So 0 0.08 plus 0.027 equals 0.107. And that's our chi squared value. We're there. So we might have to tell me 0.107. Doesn't have any units. I could uh, tidy my table up if I really wanted to make it look slightly neater. Probably impossible to make this uh, look much neater. Just to separate these out. There we are. But we've got our chi-squared value, which is, the, which is the main thing. So you can actually put these into the equation straight away. But if you're like me, you need to do things in order and logically you know, to get the right answer, then, then do what I've done. But if you can use the equation, then good for you. The null hypothesis, there's no difference between the observed and expected. It's all, that's always the null hypothesis. Use the table to determine whether this determine whether this hypothesis can be supported. So not the not the null hypothesis. So the answer actually wants you to talk about your hypothesis rather than your null hypothesis. That's actually answering the question. Explain how you arrived at your answer. So we need to choose a probability value and a degree of freedom. Well degrees of freedom are one minus the number of the number of, I can't, I can't think of a word for them, a, a number of classes um, of organisms here. And we've got two. So degrees of freedom is um, the classes minus one. So we've got two, so that's two minus one. Two minus one equals one. So we are going to use one degree of freedom. going to use that that row there and then probability value well we always use the same in biology which is a 0.05 or 5% confidence or 95% you know, error 95% confidence 1 in a 20 lots of different ways of saying the same thing in some medical trials they might need to be more more sure, um, but so we're going to use 0.05, and where they cross, then that's the critical value that we're going to use. Again, we could we could guess uh, could guess from our, our number numbers here that it, our hypothesis is going to be supported, but. What we want is if our chi-squared, so if chi-squared is greater than our critical value, then we are accepting the null hypothesis. Chi-squared, 107, uh, 0.107, uh, critical value, Critical value 3.84. And so is that greater than our 3.84? No. So we would reject our null hypothesis. And so actually answering the question, um, accept or it supports our, our hypothesis. So um, hypothesis is supported chi squared is not greater than the critical
pretty cow value. If there was just three marks, you'd possibly put you know, put some numbers in, you know, 0 0.107, not greater than 3.84. So it's given given you lots of opportunities to to get these get these marks. A little tip as well. Um, quite often, any errors that you make um, will you know won't affect the later later marks. So if you if you screwed up your chi squared calculation and came up with a number of, say, five, which is wrong. And then you, but you did this bit right and you went, well, five, oh, that's greater than 3.84, so I'm, I'm going to accept my null hypothesis and reject my hypothesis. You'd get, still get these two marks. So another little tip would be, if I can't, can't do a calculation, just make a number up and then carry on with that number and you'll still get the marks later on. So you are begging for these marks. Yeah? So you need to, don't just give up, just keep going and see if you can get any of the later marks. Oof, it's a long question, isn't it? A species of insect only found on a remote island has a characteristic controlled by a pair of Co-dominant alliance. You can tell they've got bored right in this question. They, they not even tell you what the insect is, where the island is, what the characteristic is. They just need to uh, get on with it. Uh, what is meant by co-dominant? So both alleles expressed. Straight definition. Both alleles expressed in the phenotype. And then we've got some then we've got some uh, calculations and numbers. Ooh, anyway, let's write. I'm going to write these out because I'm, I'm probably easily get confused. So we've got this first one with the M's. That's our first genotype. We've got a second genotype M N and we've got a third genotype just ends. So actually that looks like our normal our normal kind of monohybrid kind of cross that we did originally. So, but but with codominant alleles. Okay. And what does it tell us? There's five hundred in total. But 300 are, let's do this in a different colour, 300 are these guys, 150 are these guys, and 50 down here. And the total is 500. Okay, and all I've done there is write down that information but in a more logical way. Calculate the actual frequency of that particular allele. So just remind, remind ourselves about frequencies. So a frequency is between 0 and 1. Zero if it's not present at all. One if every allele there is that, that particular one. And for example, you might have a frequency of 0 0.5 where half the alleles are that one that they've asked for. So that's our allele frequency. And we just need to go, let's count some alleles. So we've got 300 of these individuals. 300 of these. So three, that means we've got 300 of those, 300 of those. Okay. So let's keep a, let's, let's start a tally, shall we? That'd be interesting. So how many, how many of our, those alleles and how many of our 
ends. So for these we have got 300 M's and another 300 M's, that's 600. So, so 600 of those. Here 150 of these individuals. So remember that these are individuals. But we're actually asking for the frequency of the alleles. So we've got 150 of these M's, so we better add those. We've got 150 of our N's, so 150 there. And the last one, we've got 50 individuals, that means 50 of those N's and 50 of those N's, so we've got 50 and uh, another 50 there. So this adds up to 750, that adds up to 250 there. And then we add those together, 1000. So hang on, just, we'll just, just see if that makes sense. There's 500 insects. So if there's 500 insects, we don't got 1000 alleles, because each one's got two. So that, that adds up so far. So now frequency. So a frequency of this allele here is a fraction of our total down here. So this is our total alleles. So our frequency is so frequency of CN is 250 out of the total of a thousand which equals 0.25. Oh, I can't, I can't I tend to do uh, calculations in my head if I can and then, then confirm them with the calculator. 250 divided by 1000, 0.25. So that's our, free, that's our answer there, 0.25. So a quarter of these alleles are C N. Use your answer to uh, so this. Again, if you didn't manage this, just write in and you know do it with any old number between zero and one and you you'll still get these three marks if you can do the Hardy Hardy Feinberg. So calculate the insects expected to have C N C N. Right. Um, we have got, how, well, what is Hardy Weinberg again? So, to the total is p squared plus 2pq plus q squared. Hopefully, you've learned that. This would be our, usually, I know they're co dominant, but uh, this would be our m's, and these would be our those guys and these would be uh, heterozygous. So homozygous on either side and a heterozygous in the middle. And we are looking, we're just looking for for these actually. So we don't actually need all of this, we just need to remember Q squared is we need our, our frequency of this allele square it and that will give us our answer. So we need 0 0.25 squared. So 0 0.25 times by 0 0.25, that's what that means. So quarter of a quarter, what's a quarter of a quarter? Uh, it's a sixteenth. That doesn't help us, uh, but 0.25 times by 0.25 equals that. That's a sixteenth. 0.0625. Okay. And we have number of insects. <laughs> that is definitely not the answer. So number of insects. Let's have a look. 
0.0625 and we've got our total number of 500 so if we times that by 500 times it by 500 <laughs> there we are okay so sometimes when you when you get to an answer you're so happy that you you've got a right I've got a proportion of the the total population I'm so overjoyed I wrote that in the answer space but on checking it goes calculate the number of insects so that is a proportion of the population but what's the population so so uh, 0.0625 of our population which is 500 up there equals 31.25 and that is our answer for the number of insects you could possibly round that to the nearest insect unless you like cutting them up like me <laughs> right 15 marks so a few calculations hopefully that didn't bring too much uh, pain into your life